Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm going to be feeding one of my worm bins. And what I'm feeding today is actually listed right here on this sheet of paper. So it's going to be a variety of stuff like sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and then on to some grains. I've got some oats, I've got some buckwheat, and corn. So the, um, the stuff that they're getting is actually going to be delivered in dry powdered form. Some of the stuff was already in that form with the, um, the cornmeal, for example, but everything else I ran through my little personal blender. And in the end, my aim is just to create a worm chow that consists of all or some or some assortment of these things. But I wanted to know if there was any of them that the worms explicitly don't like. And I was also concerned about all of the, um, the shells that I included when I ground up the, the sunflower seeds and the pumpkin seeds. I wasn't sure if they're going to go for the shells. I'm assuming they're going to, but I don't know. Some of the stuff looks a little bit more splintered than the uh, the other stuff, and I don't know. Some of it I'm sure they're going to go bananas for, like these pulverized oats. That stuff's going to be toast in no time, but this will give us some insight into how they're um, enjoying some of the stuff or perhaps not enjoying some of the other stuff. So I'm going to um, segment the stuff and put it in little strips and next time we check in perhaps we'll be able to uh, determine which ones they prefer and which ones they're not too fond of so I'm gonna put on a glove move these things aside and get the bin, bin out here so we can get to work and we're gonna set this up and we'll see how it turns out so let's get started the bin that we're doing this with today is the youngest system and if you can see what it says here it says it's from the compost barrel so I guess the original idea with these worms was that maybe we would end up returning them to my compost barrel outside they were the worms that were um, separated from the compost in the harvesting of the material from that system when that system was repaired and reset. So I, um, I populated this bin here after three haul outs of worms from three separate containers full of castings from that compost barrel. And with everyone's help we arrived at an estimated population of this bin that is um, just a little bit shy of a thousand worms. It's 928 worms. I like that number, it's kind of cool. It's the model number of a Porsche from that film Risky Business with Tom Cruise. <laughs> and then the car ends up in the water. So that's a cool, cool car. So this bin has been set up originally before, before the worms got put in with some foods. And then uh, after 15 days it got one feeding and now it's 13 days after that. That gets us to day 28, four weeks of age. And all I imagined was taking this thing and dropping it on top Maybe dousing it with water so that the stuff doesn't end up flying all over the place. Hopefully the stuff will stay put. And I don't know, the only other thing I thought about was maybe supplementing the grit in the system, not knowing exactly how much grit the system has or whether it needs it or not. But usually I assume um, a young system like this can probably use some grit. But before we get into setting this thing up for the feeding, this kind of unconventional test feeding, I figured let's check out how the... Uh, 13 days since we put in the pumpkin has resulted in in terms of pumpkin depletion and casting creation and worm feeding. I don't know, 13 days for 928 worms. Seems like uh, they could probably do a pretty good job on, on the pumpkin. It's just stuff like this that I guess I'm on the lookout for now as these black soldier flies are going to eventually start creeping out of their husks. <laughs> and I guess that's one of the uh, downfalls of dealing with material that was sourced from outside is that you're definitely bringing in stuff other than just the worms. So either way, that's just my thing is to pull those out and they always end up back out in my outdoor compost barrel because <laughs> in my mind that's where they belong. And uh, any time of year I stumble on one of those little guys, even if it's uh, summertime and I ended up dragging an actual fly down here, if a fly actually was born and emerged and became a fly down here, I grab the little guy because they're slow and they're easy to catch. <laughs> and I take them outside too. So yeah, this, uh, this pumpkin seems to have done quite well here in this red wiggler bin. Here we go. I can see little bits of it. I knew I saw... A little bit of remaining material actually there's more in it more of it over here I thought I saw some yeah there we go not too much of it though oh there's a slightly larger piece of something else though this is not pumpkin this has got a different appearance to it 
It's kind of tough. Banana, maybe? I don't, rem I don't remember what, what all we put in here, but it was stuff that they obviously liked and it's stuff that they've almost completely done away with. I think it's not only castings, though, that we're seeing mixed in with the worms and the food and the leftovers. I believe some of what we're seeing here might also be some of the leftover coffee they, they probably received as part of the feeding, too. These worms have such a nice dark color to them. And I think that's usually an indicator of a worm that's pretty well nourished, has a good variety of um, different types of food as nourishment. So whatever this big thing was, I'm going to just keep it low because I don't want to leave large food scraps out on the surface. I might have been better off doing that from the start. Whatever this is too, it's clearly some sort of a food item. I'm going to have to refresh my memory on what it, what it was that I placed in here last feeding besides pumpkin. So I'm wondering what that was. But if we find any other large chunks of food, coffee, I'm not going to worry about leaving it out on the top surface. But... Any other uh, large chunks of food that we dragged up? I'd like to get those back down low. Here too, I guess, whatever. We could leave those pieces of bedding down there near the food too. It's got like all the delicious soakings of the, the pumpkin as it started to thaw. It was probably delivered into the bin frozen and then just started thawing all of its fluids and juices down into the those coffee filters and other stuff that was below it. So out here, things feel a little bit drier than they need to be. We're definitely going to come in here with the spray bottle. I think we'll, we'll add moisture to this outer edge here where this material got a little bit more airflow than it needed and resulted in getting a little bit drier than it should be. So we'll help that with the spray down. I'm guessing we'll probably find similar stuff out on this edge too. A little bit drier than it needs to be. We'll blend it in with some stuff that's not so bad, but we're going to give it all a good spray. So let's start with that. I think that's the first most important ingredient is the moisture. So I've got my spray bottle all charged up and ready to go. Just make sure everything's down low and it's already kind of level. So we'll just start building onto this, starting with moisture. This is a good chance to clean off the edges of the bin, keep everything nice and neat and tidy. As we make our way around, there is that piece of bubble wrap covering things up in the middle. So everything in the middle holds onto its moisture quite nicely. But around the edges where the bubble wrap doesn't go all the way out to the edge, it allows for a little bit of airflow. And this type of material just allows for airflow by its nature too. So it just gives up its moisture, one, two, three. Not too surprising. In time, the material in your worm bin will become much more capable of hanging on to its own moisture and not need any supplementary moisture added to it. But in a, a four week old bin, um, I could certainly see coming in here and giving it some moisture and a generous bit of it as well. So we've been going around and around kind of treating the uh, whole perimeter outer edge, but it was these two far edges I think that were the most severely dried where I'd like to make sure we drop in a good bit of water it's a good thing that this thing is such a, um, it's really strong. You can see how much water it dispenses in such a short period of time. So um, I'm kind of new to using it, but I can glance over at the bottle and I can see the level dropping as I keep dispensing. So I don't know. I didn't really look at where we started, so I don't know how much we've dispensed. But let's, um, let's get this thing in here. So I wanted this to get really damp too. So we're going to wet this thing down completely so that when we start spraying in our powdered materials they don't get sprayed around oh but you know what let's let's play that devil's advocate um assumption that they probably could use some grit so i'm going to just make sure that there's grit right below the food if they're coming up for the food they're going to uh, get whatever grit they need by having it spread out across the entire top surface of the container pretty generous on the grit application yes but like i said it's a pretty new bin and i can't account for how much i included in previous feedings around the creation of the bin so let's just be generous that's my take on it this is like a mail or it's an envelope so i um i don't know it's kind of thick material thick you know it's not not just your typical um printer paper i think it's a little bit tougher a little bit thicker material not by much though it's you know more or less 
kind of kind of like um an extra thick printer paper if you will okay i think we're uh i think we're in good shape nice and damp if we start sprinkling stuff on here the stuff should stay put i would assume so let's just start getting it in here sunflower a i guess we're going to cover up the name <laughs> If we see a lot of worm traffic and it's all just a big huge pile of castings when we come back, then we could press the castings aside and read whatever it's written below. <laughs> or just go back to the videotape and see what was written below it before we covered it up with food. So this pumpkin I think is going to be really popular too. I've got a good bit of it. But I don't want to like add more of any one of them. I'd like to go I'd like for all of them to go in here in equal quantities for the most part. So maybe the preference of um, one over the other could just be judged based on the uh, just the consumption, the amount of it that got consumed. I know this is very unscientific, <laughs> but I figured it would be interesting to just set it up and see what we get. You know, if we get just a mishmash or whatever inconclusive results, it was still um, better than not trying, right? I don't know. Do you agree? <laughs> or am I wasting my time? Whatever. Nothing else that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? All right. So after that, my only idea was to start covering things up here. But I guess we usually uh, include a coffee filter like this to indicate to ourselves where we last fed. And I don't think we're going to need that <laughs> right now. We could probably just set this thing aside and let it uh, let it maybe help prevent evaporation out here on the very far edge. How does that sound? Give it a positive uh, job. And then I will take care of getting rid of this little guy. Moving him outside where I think he belongs. And if we keep bumping into others, we'll do the same. We'll evict them. And if I see a, an actual black soldier fly creeping out of here, I should probably have no problem catching them because they're just slow, slow. <laughs> I'll bring him outside too if I have to. But that's it. We're in good shape here. We're all done with feeding our 48-day-old Red Wigglers that originated from the outdoor compost barrel and, I don't know, they may or may not end up back outside. Depends on how attached we get to them. <laughs> but I could tell from the way they were behaving with that pumpkin that they've got a good appetite. Um, hopefully we didn't sort of, um, you know, give the inner foods an advantage by having the, the pumpkin that they're still finishing off right below it. Perhaps I should have spread the contents of the material out a little bit better, whatever. I'm sure I could have done a much better job on setting up this experiment, but whatever. We'll just see what we get. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.